so let's um, look at a couple of primary research techniques and we'll start with the ask piece just want to remind you of the biases and effects that we dealt with in a previous model module sorry so please specifically bear in mind things like observer and confirmation bias um, it'll take you some time to break these patterns of bringing these biases to your interviews my suggestion is that you often write these down um, and then you can on the back of the interview when you start to process your data you can reflect upon it to see whether some of those biases have found their way into the data all right so go through that module again if you must just before you have an interview now in the ask space really what we want to do is try and get um, a perspective in the words of the actual subject um, in other words not our own words uh, not our own assumptions and that built into it um, best prize is to actually record it and get solid feedback from that individual um, preferably face to face there are significant body language nuances that you can pick up as you discuss stuff and some of those for example in interviews that I run will allow me to determine whether there are any of those interviewee biases that might be coming through they might be suffering from the Hawthorne effect etc etc so face to face does allow you to probe a little deeper um, now also remember that this is the start of identifying your proxies sorry not your proxies your uh, personas um, and really what we want to do is we get as much information about this individual as we can um, so for example you know the uh, demographics you know, male female so you can get gender information get race information any of those types of things they're all particularly relevant especially when we start to do cultural type stuff now really what I, I would prefer to do in this situation is more storytelling um, and you can see that through sort of semi-structured interviews which we'll touch on just now but really the point of if, if you fill out a series of interview questions they can in the hands of an inexperienced person be pretty confining um, so you must let your interview questions guide you and ring fence you too much storytelling is a much richer experience allows them to rather express things in their own words and in, in a safe type of environment okay so um, what we want to try and do is avoid uh, well supposedly Henry Ford's quote which we've since discovered is not all right um, we really want to you know if I ask people what they wanted they'd have said faster horses you know what's the other quote from Steve Jobs if I ask people what they wanted you know, they wouldn't have told me a tablet computer all right so what we want to do is we want to actually try and unpack the answers and almost treat the solution as a, as a proxy to the underlying problem so it's it's the outward facade of something that's hidden underneath right and you wouldn't want to use techniques like the five wires to possibly understand what the underlying need or desire is that sits beneath that okay so for example you know um, we talk about banks and financial services um, but that's really one way that a bank can serve a need um, is through financial services products and, and actually if you look at underlying um, behavioral or uh, um, what's the word um, motivators for people with banks yeah you know, it's shockingly when you, when you work with banking clients you actually realize that people don't actually want to deal with the bank nobody wants to go into a bank nobody wants to deal with the bank it must just happen all right so there's these underlying pieces that, that tend to sit there so you can go and interview them about the types of products and services that they have but there's, there's also this underlying piece that you want to be able to get into and some of their behavioral motivators okay all right so well how do we do that so there's a couple of methods i've touched lightly on the semi-structured interview all right uh, we leverage a tool set called the universal methods of design um, which is a book which contains 100 methods of design there's many of those out there the diy toolkit i uh, can upload for you you know really good tools that, that you can leverage in these processes so the point of design is really to understand based upon your research questions what types of tools you actually want to use and you'll see that reflected in your research plan and the template i've given you there's a section there which is what tools you want to use now i'm only touching on a few of these that relate to the ask section um, but there are many that you can actually leverage and use within um, environments so my suggestion is you familiarize yourself with some of those okay so really the semi-structured interview 
uh, an interview a researcher and the subject really get involved in a conversation right and i've already mentioned aspects around encouraging storytelling so that's the one method uh, that we work with once again the interview questions don't be too concrete on some of those the interview questions must match your research questions so everything you do here must match your research questions which match your frames that you've discovered which matches the top opportunity that you're looking to fulfill okay a couple of advice factors for interviews all right uh, avoid leading questions um, um, do you think that this product is preventing you from enjoying your experience with our bank? All right. Now I would consider that to be a leading question. You're already putting in um, your opinion into that type of question as you move through it. All right. So you might rather ask the question, you know, what do you think um, is hindering you from in, uh, enjoying the banking services more effectively? You know? So just the same type of question but you're just sort of switching it around slightly okay now you know we will learn this in sales techniques around well what is emotions and how good are they okay so what we want to do is we want to encourage um, storytelling but we want to try and also get to underline the meaning and the things that are important to people through asking questions what do you mean by that and, and how did you come to that conclusion and the types of questions that we want to use to drill down as we go through the interview process um, also remember storytelling you want to get away from the theoretical responses that people do, and you learn this in interview techniques as well. You know, tell me about the last time you did this. What happened when you were confronted with this particular problem? Um, when this individual told you about this particular issue um, in your management style, you know, how did you respond to that? You know? So, this is really the pro the process of extracting some of those stories. Okay, and what we want to try and do is is there may be solutions which are identified. All right, but we want to try and unpack that back to a problem space. So somebody might come, people think in solutions, so they'll come back with, oh, this is the solution. Um, and then you really need to try and unpack that, you know, say, well, uh, well, you know, how did you get there? You know, is, is this solution a response to perhaps this? Well, that's a leading question, so you want to draw them out a, a, a little differently. Um, but, so the how did you get there response normally helps take the story on a little further. Okay. All right, so also be aware, and this is something that I do quite often, I tend to speak on others' behalf. Um, and do quite a few leading questions to try and hurry the conversation on. That's not the ethnographic way. You need to avoid those types of things. I've also used picture cards, all right, um, and I've recorded where necessary. So here is an example of the picture cards. Um, and I've used this in a variety of interviews where there's a series of questions and you ask them to represent their answer by drawing on some of these pictures. Um, and really, that's often the case of people that struggle to shift stuff from the, the emotional stuff from the right brain to the left brain and convert it into words. So what we need to be able to do is help them through the process by saying he has a series of pictures that you can work with in which picture is describing your emotive factor. So these are more emotively driven and they connect to the emotions and the story of the individual. Okay, And they do give you a, a more deeper. And you can buy these cards, by the way. And, um, I'll put a link up, if I can, uh, of those cards that you can acquire. Um, you're probably all familiar with this technique as well as you're going through the interview cycle, the five whys approach. Um, um, you don't want to make it like a you know the five-year-old interrogating their parents, all right? So, but you do you are trying to drill down each time, asking them, well, why do you think that happened? Or why do you think that person responded that way? Um, or why did you respond that way? Um, why were you actually trying to persuade that person to do A, B, C? So, you know, this is the point. It's called laddering sometimes, but it's really the five whys approach and something that you can use and just get used to within their context. Now, there's some, although I've done a module on empathy, and you've probably watched the video as well, um, but, you know, really there's a couple of pitfalls when it comes to the empathy space um, and what we want to try and do. All right, so um, wh what you really want to do is when you hear a response during an interview, you don't want to defend or deny what the way these people see things. Uh, you might have a bias already, and you start defending your position, not theirs. Okay. So we effectively want to stay calm and acknowledge that people have different opinions, um, whether you're in a politically correct society or not, that sometimes doesn't like different opinions. Ultimately, those are the things that we need to be able to extract, but we don't want to defend those. Okay. We also don't want to distract from the key story. Uh, and Sometimes if somebody's uh, emotional and giving a few responses about some of their struggles, you can travel a little bit of a rabbit hole. 
um, and sort of soothe them and travel down that path and that's not really getting you to the end point that you want to be able to achieve okay so try and stay in the present okay and then also be careful not to go into solution mode oh you could do this oh we could do that or you know how about this and you start to you know, introduce ideas and concepts into their heads and you s kind of stay in the solution space one of my favorites a love letter or breakup letter uh, get your uh, interviewees um, to actually write a letter. So if it's perhaps the transportation problem or it's a banking client or it's a, a phone or a service with a, a mobile operator, you know, get them to write. Imagine what it would be like to, if that was their partner and you were breaking up with them um, or you know, writing them a love letter. So a lot of emotions can be extracted in the love, let, love letter or breakup letter. And I'm going to give you an example that you can work through uh, at the end of this exercise. Um, same in a diary study, uh, an incredibly rich tool for you to use uh, to try and understand what's going through a person's head um, and uh, how you can begin to extract meaning from that. Now, what I want to, to do in, in the next exercise is I want you to use this empathy map. All right, um, easily downloadable. You, know, you can watch a variety of videos on YouTube that will talk you through the empathy map, but you can kind of see how the face is pointed. All right, you've got what's going on in your head and your heart, uh, what's going on with your eyes, what do you see, what are you saying with your mouth, and what are you hearing, and then what possible pains and gains might come out of this exercise. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a diary study um, to the back of this module. And I would like you to read through that diary study, and I want you to write down what you are hearing me. So you must get into my shoes, or the, this person's shoes, as they travel on the, tr on the train. Um, and I want you to fill out an empathy map and submit that um, um, to, to me for review. Um, this would at least uh, give us a perspective on how you've applied some of the techniques that we've learned here. So, uh, coming your way is a diary study uh, and, and an empathy map. If you have time, um, we will also do a love letter or breakup letter, and both of those you can actually apply an empathy map to. So really take some time now to just uh, familiarize yourself with the empathy map. All right? um, it's pretty um, self-explanatory. Um, and what we want to do is normally only after the interview, never fill out one of these empathy maps in front of the, the interviewee. Okay? Once you've got all the raw data, you've got the letters, you've got your notes, all the rest of it, you've got the recordings, you listen to these again, you read them again, and then you convert it into something like an empathy map, which you make part of your research um, and your outcomes that you now begin to extract insights from. All right. So take some time uh, to work through uh, this particular example, and uh, I'll catch you in the next module. Thank you.